for the introduction. Uh, so uh, let me show you the next few minutes the uh, results of our work. Uh, okay, so what was the uh, motivation for uh, these investigations of barium titanate in the vicinity of Kiwi temperature? Was the fact that uh, when we measured uh, the fracture toughness at different temperatures, we saw uh, a relatively significant drop uh, in the fracture toughness in the vicinity uh, of the Kiwi temperature when we passing through this uh, transformation temperature where the material transform from tetragonal to cubic uh, lattice. So uh, uh, this relatively big uh, fracture toughness drop might be dangerous in case of some ceramics when, where uh, the Kiwi temperature is uh, passed during the operation, as EG, PTC, virus storage and so on. Uh, so we would like to, uh, we wanted to explain why this is happened. So uh, one of our assumptions was uh, that the grains of different size uh, do not transform at the same time. And uh, this means that uh, we have non-uniform distribution of grains inside this microstructure. Uh, there will be uh, a certain moment uh, mismatch in the thermal strains uh, between the adjacent grains, which might be responsible uh, for the development uh, or for uh, this uh, fracture toughness drop. So uh, this will be uh, one of uh, the assumptions. Here we see uh, the dilatometry curves uh, of these uh, barium materials. And we see that here when we pass in the query temperature uh, there is a, mm, a sudden uh, change of uh, <coughs> slope uh, related to transformation from this uh, to to cubic uh, lattice. Okay, uh, so uh, in order to uh, understand uh, how behave the fine grain microstructure and bone grain microstructure, we prepared two, uh, two types of these uh, microstructures, the fine grain and, and the coarse grain. Uh, just be careful on the, uh, uh, on the scale, here is 500, here is 100, so these grains are in fact uh, smaller than, than this one. Uh, this, this distribution of uh, grains, uh, grain sizes in, in such a microstructure. So here we have around eight microns uh, grains in diameter. Here we have, uh, in average, uh, grains of size around uh, 45, 47 micrometers. So uh, this grain size can be uh, uh, influenced by uh, the sintering temperature. So the higher the sintering temperature, the bigger grains because it will obtain uh, more non-uniformity of uh, the grain distribution. Okay, so we then measured uh, uh, the Young's modulus, the elastic properties. So here we see again that upon transition temperature uh, there is a rapid increase of the Young's modulus and uh, also uh, the shear modulus. And here we see again the uh, the automatic curves. Uh, there are always two curves. Uh, the, the red one, the red ones are for the uh, fine, uh, fine uh, microstructure. Uh, the black ones for uh, coarse grain microstructure. Uh, and there are always two of them. Uh, one is related to uh, the heating up uh, measurements and one cooling down measurements. So for the simulations, we then took uh, the average from these two two curves. Uh, okay. So this is the Besides average curves, uh, we see a detail uh, around the transition temperature. So uh, here we see that uh, at this point we have a maximal uh, uh, difference uh, between, uh, between the dilatometric curve. So there will be a uh, maximal uh, elastic mismatch uh, between these two, two microstructures. Uh, so what was the idea of the simulation? So we considered that we will model uh, the Really, uh, we will make a, a real model of the microstructure composed of grains of various size, and we will divide the microstructure into two parts: uh, fine and uh, coarse grain microstructure, and two two these two types of grains <coughs> a corresponding uh, material properties or thermal characteristics measured uh, on, on the specific uh, uh, microstructures. Uh, we will then introduce a crack inside this microstructure and calculate the thermal stress intensity factor along the crack front so that we can see what is the contribution of the uh, thermal, uh, thermally induced stresses uh, 
from the microstructure of the uh, total stress intensity factor. So uh, the higher the thermal stress intensity factor will be there, uh, the lower apparent fracture toughness, in fact, we will obtain during passing the Curie, Curie temperature. So this was the model of the microstructure. It was created using the 3D tessellation technique and the crane growth algorithm and Lepper software. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we then transformed this uh, geometry into final element system analysis where we created the final element mesh. And we also inserted a crack uh, in various vertical positions and also of various crack lengths in order to calculate the stress intensity factor along the crack front. So we divided the microstructure into two uh, groups of grains, one small grains, 0 to 45 microns, and then the, the big, big grains. Two, these two groups we prescribed uh, corresponding material characteristics measured on the fine and coarse grain microstructure. And then we performed a thermal simulation. Uh, uh, these are the results uh, made uh, at the Curie temperature, around the Curie temperature. And we see uh, that in the small grains, uh, we have uh, relatively high uh, tensile opening stresses uh, at crack. Oh, in the whole microstructure, we have these uh, tensile opening stresses in the Z, Z direction. So they are in order of tens of megapascals, uh, around in average around uh, 20 to 30 megapascals. Of course, in, in grains, in the big grains, we have compressive resolution stresses, but uh, these, these tensile stresses will then influence the apparent fracture toughness of the, of the material. So uh, we calculated uh, the stress in thermal stress intensity factor along the crack front. Uh, since the crack front is uh, straight, there will be al always presence of uh, uh, not only mode 1 stress intensity factor, but also mode 2, eventually mode 3. So uh, when we wanted to rely this data to the fracture toughness measurements, which are measured uh, uh, usually upon uh, pure mode 1, we calculated uh, the effective stress intensity factor, which is calculated from the mode 1 and mode 2 stress intensity factor based on the Coplanar energy release rate uh, uh, introduced already a long time ago by Paris and NC. So uh, we have plotted uh, the sorry, uh, we have plotted the um, stress intensity factor uh, along the crack front, and then calculated uh, an average value. So we see that uh, there is a non-zero uh, average value uh, of, uh, of this stress intensity factor, and relatively high. Uh, values of these peaks, so uh, uh, this present factor then will be responsible for uh, uh, reduction of uh, the fracture toughness of the material upon transition of the period temperature. And it is just an evolution of the maximal or the average uh, stress intensity factor uh, with the temperature, so when we approach the period temperature, uh, then thermal stress intensity factor is increased and then it goes again to all the values. Okay. Back. Okay. And now, uh, one of the last slides, uh, we, we did also calculations when we uh, moved uh, the crack front uh, in vertical direction. So we calculated uh, for all possible uh, positions of the crack front, uh, what will be the stress intensity factor, uh, uh, corresponding stress intensity factor the crack front and we see here that uh, there are locations uh, where it's relatively high and these locations correspond exactly to, to the positions of the small grains where tensile opening stresses are present. So um, in fact in reality the, the crack will not propagate a straight line because it's not energetically convenient for it uh, but it will follow the path where uh, it will be uh, the most effective for, for it, so uh, we will select the path where the uh, opening stresses uh, will be highest. So, uh, from this point of view, the crack uh, will go around, mostly around the big grains, uh, and uh, make some very shape of, uh, of the final fracture surface. 
And this was also uh, demonstrated by some experimental observations. So we uh, measured uh, or we tested uh, the specimens uh, below and above with the period temperature. So we see more or less uh, transgranular uh, fracture surfaces. Uh, but uh, in the vicinity of period temperature, the, the surface uh, was not so, so flat, but uh, really the crack went uh, around the big grains and uh, all around uh, the interfaces uh, between big and small grains. So uh, finally, uh, we were uh, trying to explain uh, the drop of the fracture toughness in case of barium titanium material when we passing the period temperature. This is important uh, for the materials uh, which pass this temperature during operation and uh, the conclusion uh, or what we can do to avoid this effect uh, we, can, or we have to try to uh, prepare barium titanium microstructure which is composed of uh, uh, uniform uh, grain, uh, grains or grains having uniform size in the whole microstructure so that we avoid uh, these mismatches between uh, the thermal strains of uh, these two uh, grains. Okay, so thank you for your attention. And so we have time for questions, please. Oh yeah, sure. So maybe a general question uh, or basic. So in, I guess it was in your fourth slide that, I, that it, it, I could see from your graphs that by increase of the grain size, there's increase in plastic modules as well. So how can uh, one explain that? So, uh, yeah, this is a good point. <laughs> uh, I'm just the, the simulation guy. So uh, the, the, the experiments were uh, done by my colleagues, but uh, uh, probably it will be related to, um, uh, to the sintering temperature. Uh, will be, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I think I cannot answer if you very clearly this, this uh, question, but uh, it will be related somehow to the to sintering temperature. But, so it's related to the heat treatment of the material. <coughs> yeah, most probably. Or maybe to the interfaces. Possibly. Uh, the fracture behavior. Yeah, more, more from the interfaces. Be, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Another question. We we have time still. We have time now. Yes, please. Uh, how is the fracture toughness and isotropy affected <laughs> approaching the complete temperature? I mean, uh, how the uh, fact? You know, in ferroelectrics and ferrotitanate, mm -hmm. you have a very uh, extended anisotropy of fracture toughness. If you are far below the complete temperature, what happens to this anisotropy ratio approaching the complete temperature? Okay, so uh, this effect we need. Uh, uh, it might not be considered uh, to have isotropic behavior in this case. Yeah, it, should, it, should, it should, but but we didn't confirm it by experiment. <coughs> it, should, it should become isotropic, but okay. we didn't uh, confirm or investigate this. Okay. Experiment. Yeah. So I'm just going to, to look at. Uh, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Maybe I have one. Just concerning. Okay. Because you said you are the simulation guy, so okay. uh, I don't because you, you actually uh, used uh, quite a clever um, way to generate the, the simulation mm -hmm. uh, microstructure, so with this oscillation stuff and background. But uh, what if you just uh, did it, you know, very basic stuff like uh, uh, like take cubes or, or I don't know, sizers <coughs> or something very like, like the, the same shape of all grains, if it would be. Change the simulation. Yeah, the problem is that uh, we want to introduce a crack inside, and uh, okay. if you want to have a fine mesh around the crack tip, uh, it's not possible to to, to, to do it such uh, mm -hmm. simply. So we so we need some some um, how to say um, well the statistical or, or stochastic uh, um, 
try more or less yeah, myself like that. Uh, mm -hmm. you, if, you, if you want to make some parametric study, uh, everything is automatically matched. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is always problem with automatic machine if um, there is some interface of grain and so on. So uh, this was one of the approaches which worked. We tried uh, other of them, but uh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. So we are finished now.